All right, let's check the options before we get into the game. Pants? Never in my life have I seen an option for pants. Let's check this out. <laughs> All right, I get it. The dev's clearly taunting me. Oh, what? You don't like this big, fat, furry ass in your face? I mean, you're not a furry, are you? Shut up. Fine. You know what? We're Donald Duck in it. I'm not a furry. This doesn't do anything for me. Screw you. You don't know me. From the top, I'm the Doom... <laughs> Hi, I'm the Doom Prophet, and I'm playing Pseudo Regalia. It's an N64 nostalgia trip where we pilot a bunny slash good creature named Sybil. I believe this project evolved from a game jam into what it is now, a pretty complete 3D Metroidvania game with an emphasis on platforming. There is combat here, but I don't think it's going to be anyone's favorite part. You'll traverse a big castle with different areas schmoozing around. And the main emphasis here really is the movement, and that movement is, ooh, quite tasty. Just take a look at this. I don't know where the action is going to be. I, I haven't edited the video yet. Now, I've been playing an inordinate amount of Super Mario 64 recently, and coming hot off of one of the most renowned platformers of all time, it's no small compliment to Pacey to Regalia to say that I may prefer the controls of this game to Mario. As you play, you'll find it unlock more of your moveset, and oh man, Sybil is buttery smooth to control. You'll be sliding, jumping, and wall running with incredible grace in no time, and you'll be enjoying every second of it. So, this game, if I'm not mistaken, is trying to specifically replicate the look of N64 games. The models and environments are pretty simplistic in terms of polygon count, and the textures are nothing crazy complicated either. It even sort of has that blurry look that N64 games tended to have, instead of the hilarious and now infamous texture warping that the PS1 had from that same generation of gaming. Some of the animations for the characters even seem to be limited to a certain number of frames. Neat. Now, personally, I love these nostalgia bait games as I'm very fond of this particular generation of gaming. This game also keeps the style tight. There's not suddenly any model with a poly count in the thousands or a super high risk texture out of nowhere, and I admire that consistency. If these graphics turn you off, well, there's not much I can say to convince you, but I still think this game is worth checking out on the controls alone. Also, this game uses the Art Deco style for the user interface in some of the levels, and it made me realize, wait, it's, it's the 20s again. We should be doing Art Deco everything. Like seriously, what's stopping us from decorating everything like the Great Catsby? Another thing, have you seen? Don't care. So the OST for this game is really solid. Each area of the game has its own specific theme, which helps differentiate the areas a bit. To me, it sounds a bit like a mix of Michiro Yamane era Castlevania mixed with Bomberman 64, which, if you didn't know, has a banger soundtrack. Now, this is right on target for the nostalgia bait, and I love the entire thing. With the exception of the library's track. Also, have you guys seen what Konami's doing with the Bomberman IP? I mean, I know our Bomber Boy's been through some tough times before, but look at this. It's like a big anime titty gacha game or something. Society has collapsed. As mentioned earlier, this game is a 3D platforming metroidvania with some light combat elements. Hey, Editing Doom here. Sorry to interject, but I realized I forgot to say a few important things. First of all, you can kick the sword. You can use it to do a lot of damage, or it's just kind of cool. I think you can actually get a lot of air with it as well. Uh, second of all, the game actually doesn't explicitly tell you all of the moves you can do in the game, so make sure to experiment in order to unlock the full arsenal. Because there's some... Uh, some really neat stuff you can do. And I'm sure you're going to try it all out when you get the game. So you're going to get it right. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Back to business. You mostly just explore Big Old Castle and collect stuff. Most rooms of the castle will have some sort of platforming element required to navigate them. And at the end, when you have your full arsenal of moves at your disposal is when the game feels the best. There are some incredibly fun and challenging sequences where I felt like my gaming skill was being pushed to its limit. 
However, when the game isn't doing what I just mentioned is where I think there are a few issues. All right, compliment sandwich time. Now, I really like this game, but I'm gonna say some negative things about it. However, it's still an easy recommend from me, so don't take what I say next as if it's going to ruin the game. So, there's not really any sort of guidance on where to go, and I'm all for open-ended games, but you'll be wandering aimlessly a bit too much for my taste here. What exacerbates this issue is that the level design, or geometry of the game, is rather bizarre. Some of it barely looks like a human modeled it. There's just random bits of walls protruding further than the rest, and there are odd seams here and there, resulting in many areas looking like a jumble of geometric shapes. This pseudo-random geometry combined with a lack of map further complicates the game, making it almost impossible for me to keep a mental map of where I am. I spent a lot of time wondering, where am I? And how does that relate to where I was a minute ago? The doors in between areas don't let you peek through to the other side, and I'm not sure if this is an intentional choice or just loading areas selectively for performance, but unfortunately it contributes to the lack of spatial awareness. Most of the time it felt like I was progressing in the opposite way of how the game intended. I unlocked a shortcut to a place that I'd never been before multiple times. Since this is a metroidvania, it's possible to sequence break, that is, cheese your way into an area you're not supposed to be without getting certain power-ups. And I did this accidentally, thinking it was just supposed to be a really hard sequence instead of, oh, I don't have the tools for this. However, the strange thing is, these aforementioned issues sort of capture the feeling of the N64 era for me in a way that I didn't think could be recreated. When I played N64 games, they were on a hand-me-down system, and it was when I was barely old enough to have thoughts. The games I played on this system seemed impossibly difficult to me. At that age, to beat Ocarina of Time would have been a Heraclean task, and to complete Majora's Mask would have been to delve into the unsolved esoteric mysteries of the universe. I had no concept of what could be in a video game, and my imagination caused me to try all sorts of things. Now, as an adult, I can breeze through probably any N64 game in an afternoon. But, to a child, every game represented infinite mystery and possibly infinite difficulty. This game actually manages to capture a fraction of that. As I wander around aimlessly, unsure of what the game has to offer or what I can find, I am reminded of my naive self, unaware of the limitations of the medium. Alright, now let's address the elephant in the room here. Is all of this necessary? Like, all of this? Is this... Was all of this necessary? So, like I mentioned earlier, the dev is basically taunting you with the pants options. And honestly, I think it's hilarious. Now... I'm not a furry. But hear me out. So, to sum it up, the game is genius, but the weak level design drags it down a tad. One of the last areas of the game, the theater, actually fixes many of the issues I had earlier and feels very meticulously designed and thought out. It also fully embraces the Art Deco theme and ended up being easily my favorite area of the game. So, here in the theater, my favorite area, there's a sequence that reminds me of my favorite animated movie, The Thief and the Cobbler. If you're a fan of animation, you should check it out. It's a masterpiece by the late Richard Williams. Make sure to track down the director's cut, though. Sadly, the game is rather short, my first playthrough clocking in just around 7 hours, and that's with much confused wandering. All in all, after I was finished, I just wanted more. To be honest, I could do without the Metroidvania combat bits, but if the dev wanted to release a series of challenge stages focusing on platforming, that would be amazing. Again, I cannot overstate just how fun this game is to control. The game could easily be a 10 out of 10 if a level editor got shipped and we could make challenge stages for each other. Or, maybe if we just got some additional chapters from the end of the game, or something to that effect. It just needs a tad more meat on the bones to take it to the next level. However, I neglected to mention earlier that this game is 6 bucks on Steam, an absolute steal at that price. And you should get it right away. All in all, I'm excited to see what comes next from this dev. Alright, that's really all I have to say for now. You should click on some of my other videos. Sadly, I haven't made any more like this, but give me like a week or something. Doom Profit out for now. Click on another video already, get out of here.